Hi. Today I'm going to be showing how you can generate electricity from a temperature difference by using a property called the Seebeck effect. So to get started, let's create some electricity. This little device is a thermoelectric generator. We have it hooked up to the scope so we can watch the voltage as it changes over time. When I go and place my cup on top of the thermoelectric generator, there we go, as one side heats up, the voltage starts to rise, as we can see here on the oscilloscope. So we can create electricity using heat from the T. Neat. But as we continue to watch, the voltage will start to go down a bit even while the tea is still piping hot. Why is that? To understand why, first we need to go over the Seebeck effect. Metals like copper, iron, or aluminum are electrical conductors, meaning they can conduct electricity when a voltage is applied. However, they have another property that is rather strange. If one end of the conductor is warmer than the other, the electrons move away from the warm end towards the cold end. Because the two ends now have different amount of free charge carriers, this creates a voltage difference between the two ends. This effect is known as the Seebeck effect. This gets even more interesting with semiconductors. Semiconductors can be manufactured to have tons of free electrons, called n-type semiconductors, or tons of missing electrons, called p-type semiconductors. We call the missing electrons holes for convenience. When an n-type semiconductor is heated, this makes the heated end more positive, and when a p-type semiconductor is heated, this makes the heated end more negative. By putting them together and heating the ends simultaneously, we can get a device that is much better at converting thermal differences to electricity. The thermoelectric generator cell. So now that we know how the Seebeck effect works, how can we use it? Each thermoelectric generator cell only generates a small amount of voltage, so to be able to do anything meaningful with it, we need to connect them in series or end to end. In electrical circuits, voltages connected in series add together to create a larger voltage. If we cut open one of these thermoelectric generators, we can see that that is exactly what the designers did. Looking at the edge, we can see a bunch of tiny thermoelectric generators all soldered together. That also explains why the voltage ended up slowly going down once we added our T. Even though the cup heated up one side, the other side slowly heated up as well, and since the Seebeck effect needs a temperature difference to work, as that difference slowly decreased, so did the voltage. This is why in most thermoelectric generator designs there is a heat sink on the other side of the generator to try to keep that side close to room temperature. As air flows over the heat sink and through the fins, if the heat sink is warmer than the air, then the heat will leave the heat sink and go into the air. So now it's time to use what we've learned. Let's use our heat generated electricity to power a circuit. We are going to be using this simple circuit shown here. We have a thermoelectric generator creating the electricity, a capacitor, which is like a storage tank for electricity, an LED light that we want to turn on, and a resistor to limit the electric current and protect the LED. The voltage we are going to need to turn on the LED is much higher than what we got with our cup of tea, so we are going to need to put four thermoelectric generators in series to make a higher voltage. Let's do that. Okay, they are all connected now, and I added a little super glue to keep them in one piece. Now we need to find a heat sink for the other side. Hmm, that's too small. Nope, not big enough. That's big enough for one of the sides, but not for all four. Wait, I have an idea. Ah. 
Ah, there we go. Yeah, that'll work good. Now there's a heatsink. Let's put down some thermally conductive pads. Add our thermoelectric generator. And connect it up. Now to observe it, let's connect up our oscilloscope. It's all connected, so let's turn out the light. And let's adjust the oscilloscope so we're getting a nice baseline reading. And now for the moment of truth. Place our hand on here and... <laughs> Look at that. Turning on the light using just our hand. Wow. And we take the hand off, and it goes down. And put the hand back on, and it goes back up. Nice. We can also try with some hot water. Look at that, just keeps rising and rising. And, thanks to the large heat sink, the other side will stay cool and we can keep generating electricity for a longer period of time. Eventually the water will cool down enough that it won't work. But this is pretty neat. Well that was an interesting demonstration, but where else are thermoelectric generators used in the real world? There has been some discussion of using them to capture additional waste heat from nuclear power plants, including a few trial installations. However, probably the most common example of where they are used is in space probes like Voyager 1, Voyager 2, and Cassini. Those space probes have to operate way out in space, so far from the sun that solar panels can't create enough electricity. Instead, they use a thermoelectric generator where one side is attached to a small pellet of radioactive material and the other side is exposed to space. Because radioactive material gets super hot as it decays, and outer space is really cold, there's a large temperature difference, and they can generate enough electricity to power the whole spacecraft. Well, that's it. In summary, the Seebeck effect allows us to take a temperature difference and convert it into electricity. Hope you enjoyed. Have a fun and science-filled day.